Do you own an electric two or three wheeled vehicle? At very least, you've seen at least one or two around your city, right? <laughs> and you'll probably see even more of them because the market for two and three wheeled electric vehicles is projected to grow by a lot in the next decade. So maybe you don't own one yet, but you may very well be working on a design that accompanies one of these electric vehicles. And maybe you don't know that you could accelerate your e-mobility design with digital signal controllers. Well, folks, that's exactly why we're here today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Jay Nagel from Microchip Technology and I explore the trends driving the adoption of e-mobility designs and the biggest challenges associated with these applications. We also investigate the role that traction drives plays in these kinds of designs and how digital signal controller solutions from Microchip can help you ensure the accuracy, efficiency, and longevity of your next e-mobility application. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, Jay. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you, Amelia. It's great to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about how we can accelerate our e-mobility designs with digital signal controllers today. But Jay, before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us? We're looking at a multinational movement toward these kinds of designs, right? To highlight how pivotal e-mobility is to our environmental sustainability, Let's mention the net zero commitment and its impact on mitigating the severity of climate change. The objective of net zero is cutting carbon emissions to achieve a state where greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere are balanced by either removal of those gases out of the atmosphere or by safe absorption in the natural environment. According to the World Meteorological Organization, the Earth is already about 1.2 degrees Celsius warmer than it was in the late 1800s before the advent of mass industrialization. To maintain a livable planet, it's estimated the global temperature increase must be kept at less than 1.5 degrees C above what it was before mass industrialization took place. To accomplish this objective, it's calculated that emissions need to be reduced 45% by 2030 to reach the net zero target by 2050. Given that the energy sector is the source of about three quarters of greenhouse gas emissions today and transportation accounts for about 25% of global CO2 emissions, the implementation of e-mobility for all modes of vehicle transportation powered by renewable energy sources will be a large contributor to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. All right, so Jay, talk to me about the technologies at the heart of this movement. The landscape of e-mobility will become quite extensive with options for electric transportation on roadways, through the air, on railways, and in water. The electric powertrain, battery management, ADAS, and vehicle control systems that comprise each of these transportation modes will need precise analog signal measurement fast instruction execution, and high-frequency outputs for efficient operation. Embedded controllers, like the DSPIC digital signal controller, coupled with each of these semiconductor solutions, all work in harmony to optimize system response times to driver inputs, process sensor inputs, and convert power efficiently with power semiconductors while facilitating secure data transfer at high speeds within and outside the vehicle a development ecosystem with hardware and software tools, along with reference designs encompassing these solutions, can really help engineers to accelerate their design cycles and bring products to market quickly. So, Jay, the electric vehicles with two and three wheels are forecasted to grow tremendously over the next couple decades, right? That's absolutely correct. The market size for two and three wheelers, which we will focus on today, is expected to triple in the next decade. With these transportation modes expected to lead the way with 47% of the market share for EV sales. 
In fact, today, two and three wheelers make up the largest portion of road transportation globally. In general, electric vehicle use is reducing oil usage by 1.7 million barrels per day. Electric two and three wheelers already account for 62% of total oil displacements by EVs. This stat provides some great insight into the impact these transportation modes will have on reduction of the carbon footprint. So, Jay, what do you see are the biggest design issues for these kinds of designs? Some design challenges our e-mobility reference designs can be leveraged to tackle are decreasing range anxiety and extending the driving range by enhancing the traction drive system efficiency using complex control algorithms to regulate the power delivery to electric motors during motion and transferring the energy back to the battery through regenerative braking. Also thermal management by using cooling systems to prevent overheating during normal operation and high power charging, and then preventing security and theft by using encrypted messages between system nodes, especially for remote start type systems, and putting measures in place to run compliant software code. For instance, secure boot and firmware upgrades to ensure vehicle systems are executing the right software code. Also charging infrastructure, being able to implement fast charging by driving wide band gap semiconductors at higher pulse width modulation frequencies using an embedded controller for transfer of energy at higher power levels so that the user just doesn't have to wait long at a charging station. Also limiting the size, weight, and cost through integration of functions in embedded controllers, ICs, and power switches that are all major contributors to minimizing power draw from the battery. That makes sense. Now, Jay, when it comes to those electric two-wheeled vehicles, what kind of reference designs would we be talking about? Although this particular session will focus on how to leverage reference designs for traction drive, onboard chargers, and battery management systems to bring high-performance solutions to the market, It's imperative to point out the range of solutions that can be built using a broad product portfolio for applications like lighting, remote keyless entry, smart helmets, and front-end regulators. Overall, the breadth of our portfolio helps to realize low-power applications with minimal leakage and standby currents that operate using PIC, AVR, ARM, and MIPS-based controllers, minimized form factors, for the ICs populated on the PCBs, and optimal power distribution aiding in battery charge retention for that coveted long-range operation. And not to forget, adherence to functional safety standards and regulations through secure operation, fault diagnostics, and protections. All right, so specifically in terms of the traction drive you mentioned, what specific challenges are we looking at here? One of the primary challenges with motor control and traction drive applications is to maintain the requested speed set points for the electric motor while being subject to various loading and torque demands. The agility of the electric motor to maintain the needed RPM must be balanced with the amount of current consumed by the motor and its operating voltage, which directly factor into the power consumption. This is where the DSPIC digital signal controller, that's the centerpiece of our e-mobility traction reference designs, comes into the picture. Coupled with an energy-efficient motor like a BLDC or interior permanent magnet motor, the DSPIC digital signal controller with its CPU core and DSP engine is particularly adept at implementing sophisticated real-time control algorithms such as field-oriented control, that optimize motor performance and efficiency. More specifically, if we peel the layer and look within the digital signal controller, the field-oriented control can be implemented using a single-cycle MAC with data saturation, as well as zero overhead looping and barrel shifting from the DSP engine to achieve the speed, position, and the torque control. In addition, High-speed analog peripherals like the ADC, op-amps, comparators, and high-resolution PWMs provide the fast, low-latency control system response to motor speed and position that's really a hallmark of real-time control. Jay, you mentioned maximum torque. Can we talk about that a bit more? Of course, Amelia. 
To solve the problem and enhance the user experience, there are different modes in which electric two- and three-wheelers can operate, emphasizing high performance, like in sport mode for quicker acceleration and pickup, where maximum torque from the electric motor is required, or eco mode, where the current drawn by the electric motor has to be minimized in order to help conserve battery power during rides as necessary. In both of these circumstances, the advanced MTPA control strategy, which stands for maximum torque per ampere, produces the maximum motor torque for a given motor current without varying the current delivered so that battery power can be conserved using various operating modes. The field weakening algorithm allows motors to operate beyond their speed range, which is essential for increasing the RPMs to achieve higher miles per hour of a motor while conserving the battery power. These advanced algorithms executed on the digital signal controller can enhance the performance, efficiency, and reliability of electric scooters, bikes, mopeds, and rickshaws, making them more viable and attractive for customers. So, Jay, there is a wide range of safety requirements within these different e-mobility designs, right? That is absolutely correct. We have designed a spectrum of two- and three-wheeler e-mobility traction control reference designs that accommodate various power levels ranging from 350 watts to 6 kilowatts peak, supplemented with a reference design for a complete single-phase interleaved onboard charger rated for either 3.8 or 7.6 kilowatts. Starting with the electric kick scooter, this design comes equipped with regenerative braking, a speed limiter, and modes for constant power, speed, and torque. E-bike designs come with pedal assist support, regenerative braking, a speed limiter, and inputs for various sensors. E-scooter designs incorporate thermal management, regenerative braking, also a speed limiter, and ABS brakes. They emphasize functional safety and fault detection, holding various certifications. Now, an additional point worth noting is that the current market trend for electric two-wheelers is to incorporate battery voltages that are greater than 60 volts so that you can reduce the interconnect cabling sizes for lower weight and lower power losses, thereby conserving even more battery power for longer driving ranges. This is where having fault detection and safety certifications is really advantageous for development. In general, these designs feature protections for overcurrent, short circuit, over and under voltage, over temperature, motor stall, and EMI protection. The software can report diagnostics for abnormal motor behavior, communication errors, and sensor failures. Collectively, these features enhance the safety, efficiency, and reliability of light e-mobility electric vehicles. Okay, so what about traction control for those e-kick scooters you mentioned? What would that look like? Here are some of the key points of our e-kick scooter traction control design. This design is suitable for 18 to 42 volt batteries rated for up to 350 watts. This is a compact design running field-oriented control. It features censored and sensorless motor control, which provides an opportunity for cost savings, allowing the analog peripherals of the digital signal controller to measure the back EMF of the motor to determine the position. Low noise operation, which can be achieved by running the motor at a high frequency using the high-resolution PWM signals, regenerative braking capability to transfer voltage back to the battery, and constant torque or speed operation. So let's also talk about the traction control when it comes to those electric bikes as well. Of course. This design supports 24 and 48 volt batteries with up to 1 kilowatts of continuous power. This design also implements the field-oriented control to foster efficient battery use with high motor torque. Short speed bursts using the field weakening control strategy for additional enjoyment. Also four quadrant control for motoring and braking, constant torque or speed operation. And finally, the ability to incorporate different pedal assist modes with flexible, adjustable power levels, which is a very popular feature for electric bike riders. So what about traction control for electric scooters? What would that look like? 
This design supports a 48 volt nominal battery rated at three kilowatts continuous, six kilowatt peak power. It's a modular two-stage scalable design with independent control and a separate power board. For efficient power conversion in the inverter stage, 80 volt, 250 amp topside cooled MOSFETs with 100 volt half bridge gate drivers are available. There's also shoot through protection using a DC link shunt, Hall effect based non-contact current sensors, and compatibility with multiple rotor position sensors that are really important for high resolution measurement of the rotor angle for optimal control. And then for safety, multiple temperature sensors to monitor capacitors, MOSFETs, and the motor, just to ensure the reliability of the device as well. So Jay, we also need to talk about battery management systems as well, right? What's all involved in a battery management system? Some of the key elements of battery management systems where microcontrollers and mixed signal devices play a key role is in cell balancing, execution of battery management algorithms, and longer life cycle and faster charging of the battery. Cell balancing is crucial to maintain an equal voltage level for every individual series connected cell in the battery to achieve the maximum efficiency. Variations in the voltage levels of the individual cells can lead to thermal runaway, cell degradation, and incomplete use of the pack energy. Battery management algorithms for passive cell balancing, state of charge calculation, and state of health ensure the longevity and survivability of the battery, enabling the electric two or three wheeler to be used for long periods, reducing waste caused by disposal of the battery and also of the electric vehicle. In addition, algorithms can be incorporated into embedded controllers that support longer life cycle and faster charging with the capability to double the life cycle and reduce charging times by almost 25% creating an even more enhanced user experience. Jay, you also mentioned onboard chargers as well. So can we talk about those too? Of course. The onboard charger can be configured for a single phase or three phase input with a totem pole configuration for power factor correction and a voltage inverter. The onboard charger is an interleave design using silicon carbide power switches that can be rated for either 3.8 or 7.6 kilowatts. This design uses the DSPIC digital signal controller dual core design with the primary core that manages communications and housekeeping functions with the secondary core being used to control the PFC and the inverter. This reference design also incorporates nonlinear and adaptive loop control algorithms with the digital signal controller, which is pivotal due to the nonlinearity and output unpredictability of power conversion systems in general. This design is set up as a modular configuration with baseline software code for rapid prototyping and development. And this design also supports implementation of functional safety. All right, so Jay, before we go, can you recap your main points for me? The motivation behind providing reference designs to accelerate development for electrified transportation is really to lower pollution and promote sustainability. Design cycles for vehicle architectures are being supported by rapid electrification being driven by investments, supporting widespread adoption alongside technological advancements that will enable the transition and adoption of electrification. Solutions from microchip include advanced motor control, battery management systems, and charging solutions. Additionally, we offer other solutions such as security, remote keyless entry, dashboard, and lighting systems. Excellent. Well, Jay, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash 